Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 87 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is sautéed truffle gnocchi, acorn squash, peas, and guernozette. The richness of this dish makes a great amuse-bouche or small plate. It is the best gnocchi I've ever had, by far, and is different because the gnocchis are sautéed and browned on two sides, not boiled in water. You will learn to make and cook a roux, to shape gnocchi dough, and to cut the gnocchis by hand. This dish is challenging in several ways. Sometimes kitchen gremlins ruin the dough in the making. Having made this dish at our home in Santa Fe, I know that altitude, 7,000 feet, is one unpredictable culprit. I suggest you have extra ingredients on hand in case you need to try again. Another challenge is to saute each gnocchi just long enough to brown it, then flip it without tearing off the brown surface. Then saute and brown the other side and remove it from the pan without tearing off that side. Because you'll be sauteing somewhere between 16 and 64 gnocchis, plus some extras to be safe, the sauteing process will take intense concentration and a very delicate touch. Because none of the components of this dish retains heat well, the final challenge is to serve it warm, which requires keeping all of the components warm, including the plates, until you're ready to plate up and serve. Although challenging, this dish is well worth the effort. To serve as an amuse-bouche, plan on two gnocchis and two squash cubes per person and a few peas. For a small plate, plan on six to eight gnocchis and squash cubes per person and enough peas to make the plate look nice. Techniques today are cubing squash, grating and chopping, steaming and keeping warm, seasoning, simmering, sifting, beating, and making a roux, tempering, making and shaping dough, slicing and making gnocchi, sautéing a la minute and browning, plating, garnishing, and garnishing from on high. So let's start cooking. All right, let's talk about the ingredients or the mise en place that we'll need for lesson 87. Now first we're gonna to need to have um, eight ounces of clarified butter. There's a separate lesson on clarified butter and we've also done clarified butter in earlier lessons. And then you want to heat this to the stage of Guer Nozette. Guer Nozette means that it smells like hazelnuts. And um, that we did that in lesson 81, okay? We'll also need to have about one cup of peas. These could, be, these could be fresh peas or frozen peas that you've thawed out. Heat them up or cook them. If they're already cooked, you just need to heat them. Season them, salt and pepper. Uh, so, so heat them up or cook them uh, and use either water or if you want, add some stock to it or some bouillon. It gives it some more flavor. And then once they're cooked, just keep them warm until we're ready for plating. Same thing with that Guerno set. Keep that warm until we're ready for plating. We'll need to have kosher salt and a pepper mill with black peppercorns. Uh, we'll also need to have a one acorn squash that's been cut into cubes that are about a half an inch square. Now, it's hard to cut perfect square cubes, but uh, you know, just cut them into pieces that are about roughly a half an inch square. I've cut the whole uh, acorn squash. Some acorn squashes are small, some are large. Uh, you're going to need about six to eight of these per person if you're making the um, number of gnocchis for the, for the number of people in the description. Uh, but if you have leftovers, just use them for some other purpose. We'll, have, we'll need to have two cups of milk and then um, three quarters of a cup of, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm cooking at altitude 7,000 feet, so I added two tablespoons of flour. Okay, so normal uh, sea level, roughly sea level be two, I'm sorry, sea level would be roughly three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour if you're adding more flour at altitude. We need to have uh, one egg yolk and then about uh, one third of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, about a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg, uh, one and a quarter ounces by weight of truffle butter. It can be white truffle butter or black truffle butter. This is white truffle butter. And oh, and by the way, on the ingredients uh, to make the roux, which is the milk, the flour, the egg, the Parmesan cheese, and the truffle butter, and the nutmeg, um, normally I don't measure things very precisely, but it's fairly important to measure precisely for the roux, which becomes the dough to make the gnocchi. Uh, otherwise, it may not come out right. Uh, also, you need to have some olive oil, some white truffle oil, some uh, red peppercorns in a pepper mill. Uh, 
these come this way, you buy this little pepper mill, it already has the red peppercorns and the pink peppercorns in it. These are pink peppercorns, either one, red or, red or pink. And then about one tablespoon of freshly chopped parsley. There's probably more than that here. I always chop too much. And then we'll need some cornmeal. Okay, that is all of the um, uh, ingredients. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the equipment for Lesson 87. All right, for equipment for Lesson 87, we're going to need our trusty cutting board and our trusty chef's knife. We'll also need to have a slicing knife to cut the gnocchi to size. We need to have a peeler to peel that acorn squash, a grater to grate the nutmeg. Uh, we'll need to have two small saucepans, one to hold the uh, buernosette, so when you make the buernosette, and the other one uh, about the same size to cook the peas. Uh, I put the peas into the refrigerator for the time being. And uh, then we'll need to have a um, uh, something to turn the dough out onto. Now if you're a baker, you might have a marble slab. That would be great. Uh, uh, if you have granite countertops, that would be great too. But if you don't have either of those things, just turn it out onto uh, your countertop, clean countertop. And uh, it would be better to do that than onto a textured cutting board, okay? It might stick to a textured cutting board, but if you turn it out onto a smooth um, countertop, that will work better. I will also need to have a sheet pan and some parchment paper. And um, then we'll need to have a saute pan. Now, in my decades of cooking, uh, I have never used nonstick pans. But I recently got this nonstick pan uh, called Our Place. It's great, actually. And um, it comes with a spoon, like kind of built right into the handle, so it's always there, right? And it comes with a steamer, too, and a, and a lid. And um, uh, for this dish, nonstick is good because, as I was explaining in the introduction, it can be tough to saute the gnocchi and then turn them without leaving the nice browned surface in the pan, okay? They tear off very easily, okay? So using a, um, a nonstick pan is perfect for this uh, preparation. Then you're gonna need to have something to turn them with. Now, since it's a nonstick pan, you know, you're not supposed to use a metal spatula or a metal spoon or a metal knife. Uh, so we're gonna try to use these little rubber-tipped uh, spatulas and uh, we may pick them up with the uh, spatula, or we may just use the edge of the spatula to try to turn it. Okay, we're gonna see how that goes, because I don't wanna scratch up the pan. Uh, you could also use a uh, metal spoon and just be very careful with it, hopefully not damage your, your nonstick pan. If you're not using a nonstick pan, you can use anything you want to turn them over, but you have a more likelihood of them sticking to the pan and the brown surface tearing off of the gnocchis when you try to turn them. We need to have a couple of sizzle plates, one to keep the gnocchis warm as we cook them, and one to keep the squash warm after we've steamed it. Then we'll need to have warm plates, one per person. Now, they can either be shallow bowls, or they can be a plate. Now, this plate has a little bit of depth to it, okay? And the reason is, uh, I want the, uh, the buernosette to kind of stay in there and not kind of run all over the place uh, when uh, we plate up. And these plates should be warm before you plate, because as I explained in the introduction, it's hard to keep the components of this dish warm. They lose heat very quickly. So uh, if you start out with warm plates, uh, you um, may have uh, uh, an easier time making sure that the uh, plate is warm or the food is warm when you serve it. And then finally, we'll need to have a plating spoon. That's all of the equipment. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. All right, the first thing on our prep list is to simmer the milk with some salt, okay? So we're going to turn on the heat to uh, about mm, between low and medium, okay? And we're going to add one teaspoon of salt and stir that up a bit. Now we're going to let this come to a simmer, okay? We're not going to let it come to a boil. We're going to let it come to a simmer. And once it's at that simmer, we're going to let it simmer for five, five, seven minutes, something like that. Okay, our um, milk is just starting to simmer, so I'm going to turn this heat down to uh, low and uh, let it simmer for, you know, like I said, five to seven minutes. But uh, keep an eye on it. You don't want it to come to a boil. So even if it's on, even though it's on low, if it starts to boil, you're going to need to use a heat diffuser or move it off of the heat a little bit so it's not getting so much heat and it doesn't come to a boil. All right, the milk's been simmering for about um, five minutes. Now we're going to sift in some flour, okay, just pouring the flour into the strainer 
where you could use a sifter and uh, just tapping the sifter on the edge of the pan and then we're going to mix some of that up all right and then we'll do some more now it might be a little bit lumpy at first we'll get those lumps to clear as we uh, as we cook it okay Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to beat this flour into the milk, okay, with this wooden spoon. Make sure to get into the corners and along the sides so none of the flour burns. And you should end up with a dough or a roux. This is a roux. Roux is made with, um, usually with, with some kind of fat and uh, flour, but you can make it with water as well. Uh, we're making a dough from this roux. And uh, anyway, this should be um, thick not soupy okay if uh, it is soupy add another tablespoon of flour and see if you get get it to be thick all right now now once we um, are beating this flour into the milk um, we're gonna do that until the uh, roux is thick and it's starting to pull away from the pan uh, and that should take about four to five minutes so we're gonna keep it moving we have it on low heat what we're doing in the process here is we're, we're mixing up the, the dough. We're also cooking the flour. Okay, so we have a nice thick consistency. As you can see, it's kind of in a, a kind of in a um, lump by itself. Okay, it's kind of pulling away from the pan. All right. Uh, now what we're going to do is take this off the heat and temper in the egg yolk. All right, now what we want to do is temper in the egg yolk. So, right, so we're going to pour that egg yolk down the side of the pan and then we're going to mix it in, okay? Should be mixing and uh, make the dough kind of silky, which is working this time doesn't always work as I mentioned it can make a difference whether you are at uh, altitude add extra flour for that now what we want to do is stir in the Parmesan the nutmeg the truffle butter Now as you mix that butter in, the dough should get kind of silky, kind of slick, and um, it should start to look like it's shapeable, okay? It shouldn't be sticky, it shouldn't be uh, um, so that if you were to reach down into it and make up little peaks, it should come off into pieces rather than uh, being a, um, like a sticky mess, okay? So I still haven't mixed in all the butter. So this is, looks like it's coming together well. I'm going to get all that butter incorporated into the dough. Okay. Okay, it looks like we've mixed all the butter into the dough. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do now is turn this dough, dough out onto a work surface. Now, if you um, have a marble slab, turn it out on the marble slab. I'm going to turn it out onto this granite countertop. Okay? Looks beautiful, nice and slick. All right? Gonna take uh, 
the dough off of the spoon, off the wooden spoon. Now what we want to do is shape this dough into a rectangle that's about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick, all right? And that is, uh, has fairly square corners because we're gonna be uh, chilling this and then after it's chilled, we're gonna cut the gnocchi, or we're gonna cut the dough into the uh, individual gnocchi pieces, which will be about mm, half an inch to three quarters of an inch square, okay? So pressing it down onto the board, trying to work it into the shape of a triangle and trying to keep a uniform thickness all the way around, okay? Okay, there we go. We have a nice slab of uh, dough. We have pretty square corners. It's pretty rectangular. And it's about, um, I'd say it's about a half an inch thick. And we're gonna let that cool a little bit so that it um, firms up a little bit. Then we're going to chill it. Okay, here we have our sheet pan and a piece of parchment. The parchment doesn't have to cover the whole pan because it only needs to be big enough to, um, for the, uh, uh, the dough to sit on top of it. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle that parchment with uh, cornmeal. Okay, now we're going to lift our dough off of our work surface and put it onto the, um, the parchment. And you know, if it gets a little deformed in the process, just try to fix it, okay? Now what we want to do is put that into the fridge. I usually don't cover it if it's only going to be in there for an hour or so. Um, and we're going to, we're going to be, uh, or a couple hours. Uh, we're going to put it in the fridge for at least one hour. But you could make this up um, in advance. You could make it up the day before. Um, if you do cover it, uh, check it, and if it starts to get condensation on it, take the plastic off, either dry the plastic or put on some new plastic. So we're gonna try not try to avoid getting condensation on it, okay? But you could make it a day in, in advance, you could make it two days in advance. You can also make it and freeze it, okay? Now I recommend cutting it before you freeze it. Uh, but we're gonna put this into the fridge now for at least one hour. Okay, the gnocchi have been chilling for at least an hour, the dough has at least, and um, now it's time, so it's shortly before we're gonna be cooking the gnocchi and plating up. So we're going to now steam the, uh, the acorn squash. I already have the water going in the steamer. We're going to uh, give them some salt and some black pepper. And then we wanna cover it Get some good pepper in there. Good. You want to cover it and let them steam for um, about eight to ten minutes. We're going to check them at that time and uh, see if we can pierce them easily with a um, toothpick. Okay, our dough has been uh, chilling for about uh, three hours actually. And we're going to just take it off of the um, parchment, put it down on our board, and now what we want to do is slice it into cubes, and the cubes should be about as wide as the gnocchi is thick. All right, now I'm going to uh, cube these, cut them into cubes, uh, about four strips at a time. So I'm going to put the other strips back onto the um, parchment. All 
And what we're going to do is take these, keep a little separation between them so they don't stick together too much. Line them up. And then we want to cut them into cubes. All right, now we're going to take these gnocchi and we're going to place them onto a sheet pan that's been scattered with a little bit of um, cornmeal. Now, we're going to cut, some stri cut these strips into cubes for as many gnocchi as we need. Now, um, if, you don't, if you need them all, then cut them all. Uh, if you don't need them all, then uh, you can actually freeze these and use them later. You can, in other words, you can leave them in these strips if you like. And they're kind of like, they're kind of like cheese strips if you saute them as a strip. Or you can just cut them into gnocchi and use them at a later time. Uh, so we're gonna do um, as many as we need for uh, tonight. And the rest of them, we're gonna freeze. Okay, our squash was steaming for about um, 10 minutes and the uh, cubes can be easily pierced with a, with a toothpick. Now we want to keep these warm until we are ready to plate up. What I'm going to do is just leave them on the steamer pot, turn the, water down, uh, turn the temperature down to uh, low and keep them covered until we're ready to plate. Okay, it's time to saute the gnocchi, so we're going to put our heat on uh, a little bit below medium. We don't want these to cook too fast or to, uh, to burn. And um, since this is a nonstick pan, I'm going to take a paper towel and rub the oil around on the bottom of the pan, make sure it's nice and coated. Now, the, the, um, the gnocchi, they have the cheese in them and they have the butter, so they're kind of self-lubricating um, um, for purposes of uh, cooking them. But I'm just adding a little bit of olive oil uh, just to make sure that they uh, start cooking properly. Okay, we're gonna put some gnocchi down in the pan, keep them separated, and I'm putting them in um, starting at about nine o'clock so I can kind of keep track of uh, where, uh, of, of the ones that went in first, okay? And we're gonna do these in batches. Now we're going to let them start to saute and we want to get them to be brown on the bottom before we turn them. All right, let's see how they're looking. Oh yeah, we're getting a nice brown on there, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is start to turn them over. Now that is a uh, tricky business, right? You want to get the brown side up. And uh, sometimes I use my fingers. Sometimes I use spatula. It's a little bit trickier in this uh, non-stick pan because I don't want to um, scratch the pan. So, you know, the non-stick has a real advantage for this dish because it's less likely that the gnocchi will stick. But uh, it's also you have to be more careful so you don't scratch your pan. So it's like a trade-off, you know. All right. Turn them all over, and we'll let them brown on this side. Good. All right, let's see how they're doing. Oh, we got a nice brown. Okay, so when, when we get a nice brown on the other side, we're going to take them out of the pan, and uh, we want to keep them warm until we're ready to plate. And as soon as we get these off, we're going to add another batch. Add a little bit of olive oil. Stir it around. And add the next batch of gnocchi. Now 
And now I can see that it's hot over here and I can actually start to see the brown coming up from the bottom of that gnocchi. So that's a hot spot. So we're gonna turn our pan a little bit here so we uh, kind of share the wealth in terms of heat. We started here, check them. Look at this one. It's already, already uh, browned on that side. So we're gonna turn that one over. Now, you know, you'll, you'll probably notice that as your uh, pan gets hot, they may go uh, faster, okay? And in that case, turn down your heat a little bit, and you may not be turning them in the same order that you put them down like we did on that first batch. Okay, let's take them off when they're nice and browned on both sides. You just have to use your judgment as to how much browning you want. I like to have them so that they have some brown and you can still see some of the um, dough color. But um, because some of them will cook faster than others, you will have some that are more browned than others. Okay, now we're going to keep these warm. Okay, it's time to plate up. We're going to start with about uh, six. We're going to do about six gnocchi per person. And then we're going to add some, uh, some butternut squash. I'm sorry, this is acorn squash. About the same number of pieces. give or take. Some peas. Some butter. little drizzle of truffle oil twist of red pep whoop oh, I had a peppercorn disaster here let's see if we can still get this to work yep get some twist of peppercorn and then garnish with some parsley from on high and there we have it that's lesson 87, truffle gnocchi with acorn squash, peas, and buernosette. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Next up is tuna tartare with mango and shrimp in a martini glass ice bowl. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.